I'm Nikki Javakit from Look Up Strata, and I'm also the Managing Director of Tower Body Corporate in Queensland. And I'm your host for this webinar. And we're delighted to be joined by Zach Gleason from GQS. How does your building sum insured impact your insurance, strata insurance policy? What's included in the valuation and how is the valuation figure calculated? Do you have any control over what that figure is? Zach is talking about insurance valuations in strata and the building sum insured. Zach has an interesting case study to share with us and we even discuss the growing incidences of denied insurance and why this may occur. Before we begin, I'd like to mention that the information in this session, including the discussions arising from submitted questions and chat conversations is not legal advice and should not be relied upon as advice. You should seek independent advice before acting on the information contained in this session. So we welcome Zach uh, to the session this morning. Thanks so much for joining us, Zach. And thanks to everyone coming along as well. Um, I'll just jump straight in. I know time is of the essence this morning. So I guess uh, just a little bit about myself and, and GQS. Um, I'm a quantity surveyor. Um, for those of you that don't know what a quantity surveyor is, um, we're construction cost experts. Um, that, that's our field of expertise. Um, to become a quantity surveyor, you usually do a four year university degree, um, sit a panel interview to become a member of the Australian Institute of Quantity Surveyors. Um, and I'm also a certified quantity surveyor. So after a period of time in practice, you can also sit a secondary interview, um, panel interview with the Australian Institute to become a certified quantity surveyor. So I founded GQS in 2017. Um, since then, we've done over 10,000 projects for, for clients all over the country. Um, we're based in, in Queensland, head office in, in Brisbane, um, but we, are, we do truly have a nationwide coverage, including the Northern Territory, Tasmania, um, and, and everywhere across the country. Um, the, the services that we offer, obviously, we do a lot of work in the strata space. We, we, we do insurance valuations. We do sinking fund forecasts, maintenance plans, cap, capital works plans, um, the state equivalent of, of that service. Um, we do tax depreciation. So any investors on the, on the webinar that, that might own an investment property in a strata community, we do tax depreciation on those. And we also have a building consultancy arm, which assists strata properties with common, common area defect inspections, um, drone roof inspections, um, inspections to assist you gaining um, insurance coverage if you have a high claim history as well. So that's the sort of niche area that, that, that we're in um, as quantity surveyors and building consultants. So today I'm going to cover off on a number of things. Um, most importantly, the building sum insured. Um, how, what that is in the strata policy and, and, and how that interacts. Um, we're going to cover off on the difference, I guess, between contents, that might be lot owner contents, um, body corporate or strata, contents insurance, and the difference between contents and the building sum insured. Um, so uh, we're also going to discuss the uh, building sum insured and how that compares to the market value of your lot. Um, the construction market, I guess what's happened pre and post COVID, um, it's, it's been, you know, got a lot of media attention and how that construction market directly relates to the building sum insured. Um, internal lot renovations, so if a particular lot has been renovated, um, what differences, if any, that makes to the, to the strata policy building sum insured. Um, the, the risks of an averaging clause, co-insurance or under-insurance clause. Um, in your strata policy and, and more. So the building sum insured, it, it's really um, important to understand this number. Um, so it, it's, it's uh, the, the number highlighted there, that's a typical, uh, I guess, outlay of a strata policy. Um, so that building sum insured of, of 1.4 million. Um, it's really important to understand, I guess, um, us as quantity surveyors and any quantity surveyors, uh, we've got ex exclusions in our insurance valuation. So it's really important to discuss with your broker the effect of any exclusions and, and how that interacts with your policy and whether there's any differences there that need to be discussed with your quantity surveyor and your broker. Um, on, on the bottom left there, there's a little table and, and it shows the, the inclusions within a building sum insured. So it's not just a construction figure to build what your strata property is. Um, that's the first figure, the construction figure. 
The second third um, and the, the second figure, sorry, is the demolition figure. Um, so that's obviously, you know, you've had some sort of disaster, may that be fire. Um, the structure might be partially destroyed. We need to um, remove any remaining structures and debris from the site, clear the site, ready for a new contractor to come in, mobilise and reconstruct on that property. The third, fourth and sixth figures relate to escalation. Re really important. So that third figure, 41,000 in that example, that allows for, hey, there's been a disaster. Um, there's a period of time where there, where um, the insurers are sending their assessors out. Um, we need to go out to tender and appoint a demolition contractor. So there's a period of time lapses there, which we need to allow for escalation on that construction figure and demolition, demolition figure for escalation over that time. Similar with the fourth, the fourth figure, the 119,000, that's allowing for escalation after demolition um, until a contractor mobilises on site ready to construct. So that's getting through a tender period, a redocumentation period, any approvals that's needed through local councils, et cetera. Um, that's what that figure is for, that period in time, any escalation that arises. Um, the, I'll jump to the last figure, which is the $191,000 figure. That's allowing for the worst case scenario. So you take out an insurance um, coverage for 12 months. That's allowing for escalation up until that last day of the policy period. Um, so an additional escalation allowance there to allow for the worst case scenario. So the second last figure, the $262,000 figure, that's a, to allow for our consultants design supervision fees. Um, I wanted to, to, to cover off quickly on the importance of inspections um, during the insurance valuation process. Really, really important. So um, as well as that building some insured, we're the eyes and ears on site for the insurer or the underwriter. So part of our process is to go out on site and build up a um, insurable property description. So that's um, not notifying the insurer of what materials are used in this construction, what fire equipment's installed on site, what security systems are installed on site, and that helps the, the, the broker and the underwriter um, do their risk analysis to set your premium. Um, so it's really important if you're being offered a, a desktop valuation, really important to understand that they've, you know, they may have been to site last year, nothing's changed, that's fine. But really important to understand that that quantity surveyor knows what's on site and they can relay that message to the insurer because otherwise they're going to allow for the worst case scenario and increase your premiums. Um, a, a big risk for new developments. So this is the most common case of a strata property being underinsured. So um, in most states, it, it's legislation that the developer pays for the first insurance um, coverage, insurance policy. So they'll pay the first premium and they've got to put forward a building sum insured. So in most cases, the remembering that the, the developer is paying for this, they, they know what it costs them to construct the property. So they've put forward a construction contract sum to the insurer saying, hey, let's insure for this. Um, as you can see that I stepped you through just before, there's escalation, there's demolition, there's design fees. If they haven't considered that from day one, you are 30, 35, 40% underinsured. So it's really important to know if you have, say, bought off the plan, you're coming in, stepping up to the committee. Um, really important to ask that question to your strata manager or owner, owner's corporation manager and saying, hey, where did that figure come from? Was it independently valued or did the developer put that forward and, and, and what's that basis? And most of the time that won't get picked up until the first review by QS. That might be three to five years down the track and you've been under, significantly underinsured for that period. Um, also, review, review periods, I guess, in automatic indexation. I, I, I've mentioned a few times already that three to five year period. That's the most common time frame that we come in and review the building sum insured. In some states, it's legislation. It must be independently reviewed at least every five years. Um, over the past, you know, three, three and a half years with escalation, We've been telling our clients, hey, you really, even if it's a desktop update and we've been to the site before, you really need to be reviewing this building sum insured annually 
Um, because if you're not keeping track of escalation in that space, you're building some insured can very quickly, you know, be outside of, you know, five to 10% out, out of what it should be. So what the insurer does, they place an automatic indexation on the previous building sum insured. Um, so what we saw pre-COVID was on average construction costs were very steadily increasing two and a half, three, three and a half percent per year. Um, and insurers were applying an automatic, automatic indexation, which might be five to six percent. So typically before COVID, we would come in, do our assessment, and they've had compounding automatic indexation for five years, and they're building some insureds too high. They're paying, their premium is too high. So we come in and say, hey, this is the value that it should be, and you take a nice saving on your premium. Since COVID, um, the automatic indexation is still being at play. It might be uh, rising five, six, seven, eight percent by some insurers, but by the um, by the insurers. But in some areas around the country, cost escalation has been 12, 14, 16, 20 percent annually. And all of a sudden, there's a real risk of underinsurance. So most commonly now we're finding we're coming in. Um, here's the current building sum insured. We're actually quite a, 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 an, an amount percentage higher on what you're currently insured for, which is a, an obvious risk. Um, it's important to discuss, I guess, with, with your insurer and, and the QS as well, any implications on heritage listings, bushfire zones, flood zones. Um, these things can um, make a difference to the building sum insured. So um, important to raise this if you think it may be an issue. Um, and the other interesting one is development zoning. So you might own a lot that's 40 years old. Um, it's a block of 10 apartments. And you well know the development zoning has changed now that if that was demolished, you could build 50 apartments. So we've had the question before, hey, what are we insuring for here? Are we insuring to replace our 10 units? Or are we insuring to build the highest and best use on the site, which is 50 apartments? Um, the building sum insured is based on replacing like for like. Um, so yeah, please don't increase your building sum insured to, to allow for that highest best use scenario because it's going to be dead money, not, not used, not able to be used. Um, another interesting point about heritage listings. So say we're doing a valuation on a property in Tasmania or, or Melbourne, built in the 1800s, heritage listed, um, it's got some unique features about the building. Um, the qualification of the valuation is that it's based on replacing like-for-like -like equivalent use materials. So if there's something um, that's been installed on site that is no longer available, that's not allowed for. You know, if, if you've got something that needs to be handmade for 10 years, that's not, that's not going to be included in your, in your reinstatement cost. So moving on now into contents. Um, so it, it, I guess, first and foremost, really important to lean on your QS, your strata manager, your owner's court manager, and your broker to identify any discrepancies between. There's typically three different policies at play here. There's obviously the building sum insured within the strata policy. There's the common area contents, which is highlighted on the, on the policy there. And there's also the, the lot owners or, or landlords contents insurance, home and contents insurance. Um, so I guess uh, there's been an analogy on, on one of your webinars before, Nikki. You know, if you turn the structure upside down and shake it, everything that may fall out is typically going to be contents and the responsibility of the lot owner. Um, anything that's fixed is body core. There's a few um, uh, most common um, things as well, which is carpets or removable floor finishes. They're typically the lot owner, uh, not, the, not the strata company. And also air conditioning. If that air conditioner is only servicing one lot, it typically is the responsibility of the lot owner to, in, to ensure for that, for that system. Um, but yeah, I, I can't stress enough how important it is to lean on your broker and your strata manager and your QS to make sure that you're adequately covered for everything. So the building sum insured um, and market value, it's a really common misconception, I think, 
in the market, um, you know, we, we might come in and, and identify that as that a site is well and truly over the top insured and, and figure out that that figure has been based on the market value of the of, of, of the lot. So let's say we come in and say, hey, the insurance value to build like for like what's there might be $300,000 per unit. Whereas those units are actually worth $800,000 per unit. There's a very large discrepancy bit between those figures and you could be paying very unnecessary premiums. Um, I guess the other thing that we commonly get um, confused with is property values. Um, so us as quantity surveyors, we're experts in construction cost. That's why we do this exercise. Property value, property valuers, they're experts in the market value of your property. Hence why they're engaged at mortgage time, um, you know, revaluation purposes. Um, so it's really important to understand that difference. Um, a lot of property valuers offer insurance valuations as a service, and that might be up to a nominal sum. Say, hey, we're going to take on any insurance valuation job up to $2 million, but then their indemnity insurance caps out. And that's because if you read your mortgage valuation, say, the last mortgage valuation you had done, the banks force the property valuers to provide an insurance valuation as part of their valuation, but they're not actually qualified to do so. So they will disclaim in their valuation, hey, we're not a quantity surveyor, you need to engage a quantity surveyor to firm this figure up, but hey, here's our best guess. Um, so I guess the other thing at play there is, in, is indemnity. If you've engaged a property value to, to revalue your $50 million complex and their indemnity insurance only covers them up to $2 million, there's a there's a very big difference there. Um, so quantity surveyors, we're able to achieve much higher levels of professional indemnity insurance. So if the worst happens and you are underinsured, but you've had an independent valuation done, you can then come after our insurance and, and be covered for any differences. So that's, that, that's, that's a really important point. I must say I'll, our biggest client is a property valuation firm, referrals from a property valuation firm. So we do work very closely, but it's just important to, to note that difference between the two professions. So the construction market, it's been an extremely interesting market over the last few years. Um, obviously, lots of media hype around it as well. Um, but I just wanted to touch on that today because it has a direct relation um, to the building sum insured. Um, so just, just quickly, I guess, if you look at that graph in the bottom left-hand corner, um, that's construction cost escalation over the last five years. And you can see how it's spiked um, over that COVID, COVID period. And you can see how I mentioned, you know, it was sort of hovering around that 2% really stable leading into, leading into COVID. And then it, it really ramped up. Um, so I guess there's been a, a lot of things at play with the increases in construction costs. Um, and, and that's, uh, you know, it might be due to high fuel prices, increased electricity costs, supply chain issues, um, you know, there's timber issues, a lot of our timber plantations burnt down, um, you know, there's data to suggest we're going to be a quarter of a million house frames short by 2035, that's an awful lot. Um, there's supply taxes on timber out of Russia, and also we've seen an elevated demand worldwide. That pushed a lot of, um, I guess, builders and contractors when the timber spiked was to then move over to steel. And then we realized, hey, the, the, the production factories in China have been through lockdowns. They're well behind. 13% uh, of the world's trade comes out of Russia and Ukraine, and we all know what's happening there. So then steel prices went up as well. There's a, there's a well-known skills shortage um, in Australia as well um, through, uh, and, and too much activity in the market at the moment. Um, we've seen contractors working on really thin margins so um, you know if they're working on a five percent margin to win a job and then they've locked themselves in at a lump sum price and then material costs have gone through the roof during that construction period we've seen a lot of contractors fall into that and and, and unfortunately fall over during this period of time 
This has then created, I guess, the way contractors got around that was putting in place variably priced contracts with rise and fall clauses. So if they can, um, if they can show their suppliers increase their costs by 20%, it's then the end user that's copying that cost. You know, that's, that's then um, difficulties with finance. How is that increase financed? Is your, is your bank gonna finance that increase in cost? Because they've only got a certain bucket of money allowed for your project. Um, Saying that, as you can see from the graph, um, it's not all doom and gloom. Prices are now starting to ease. Supply chains are improving and catching up and demand is also increasing. We've got obviously rising interest rates, et cetera. Um, but this, I guess, data, th th this is what we track really closely in the regions that we work in all around the country. And it has a direct relation to the building so insured. So it, that construction cost, the first figure in our, in our insurance valuation, it has direct relation to that figure. But also of note, um, you know, there's some um, member-based organisations around the country that track this data as well. And, and they, you know, mail out to their members, hey, the ABS has released statistics. Um, there's been a 2.8% increase in construction costs over the last quarter. You know, think about your building some insured and the effects that have. That's a great service. Um, but it's also because we know that there's demolition, there's professional fees, there's escalation. It's not just that data that affects the building some insured. There's other elements at play as well. So we've seen over the last few years, because of a really active market, those um, escalation periods have increased in time as well. You know, we, we can't get a demolition contractor out there as quick. We can't appoint uh, a building contractor as quick. So those construction periods, those lapse periods in time, which are included in the insurance valuation, have also extended, which is in, in increasing the, um, the, the building sum insured as well. Uh, a lot of people have said it, but it's really been a perfect storm um, in, in that insurance space over the last few years. There's been disasters and, um, you know, Risk adverse, obviously, insurers that are covering losses and also rising building sum insured, um, which is obviously affecting you as a lot owner in, in a strata property. So a really common question we get is the effect on internal lot variation, uh, renovation, sorry, um, within, a, within a strata property. Um, the first point I want to make is something that gets often confused is that when, God forbid, the worst happens, everyone gets a new kitchen and a new bathroom. So, you know, you, you, everything gets demolished and you're starting new. So it, it's all well and good if someone's done a renovation to a kitchen. It's only if that renovation has put that um, work, I guess, into a, a different level of finish that's different to the rest of the property or different to what we're allowing for in the insurance valuation that your internal lot value would increase. So if you've done a $15,000 kitchen renovation, it, that doesn't necessarily mean that the insurance valuation on your lot needs to in, increase by $15,000 because in the event of disaster, you're going to get a new kitchen anyway. It's only if you know we're allowing for 20 mil stone throughout the whole complex and you've done 40 mil marble slates, you know, there's a, there's a considerable difference in level of finish that we need to allow for. When it um, when a strata committee or, or, or company, body corporate owners corp want to go down this avenue, it is it is driven by them to, to go down this in um, individual lot valuation, it's a lot more work. Um, we end up inspecting every lot. We end up gathering data from each lot owner as to what renovations or what renovations have historically been done to their property. And this, I guess, this um, little table extract is the, is the result of that. Um, it is the most accurate way to proceed. Um, it's a more costly way to proceed. And it also allows you to share the cost of the premium based on an insurable value per lot, um, which might be more suitable in some cases. Um, you know, obviously improvements should be improved by your body corp, owners corp, strata company. They should have a fair register of what's happened to the complex, which might be helpful to this, um, to this exercise as well. Um, but again, it's very important to understand what is, what isn't included 
Um, you know, if you put in new carpets, it, that has no effect on the strata policy, those types of things. Um, so really important to lean on your QS strata manager insurance broker again to make sure that you're adequately insured and whether this exercise is the most suitable for your strata property. So I want to touch on, I guess, another major risk to strata properties when we're talking about building some insured. And that's a clause common in, in, in most um, strata policies. Um, it's either called an averaging co-insurance or under-insurance clause. Um, so briefly, I guess, if, you've, if you're insured for 50 million, um, a disaster happens, um, the insurer sends out their assessors and they do their own independent estimate. They might say, hey, you, this should have been insured for 100 million. Um, even if it's only a $20 million repair bill, you're only gonna get reimbursed for 50 cents out of the dollar. So I guess this, this case study is explaining, hey, there's a, there's a high end complex of 50 apartments, significant damage due to a cyclone. Um, the property was insured for 48.7 mil. This was um, the original price of construction when it was built. So that's that risk. Hey, the developers put forward this number. No one's picked up on it. We've got a significant underinsurance at play here. Um, the building, you know, as, as, as a matter of fact, the building should have been insured for 59.2 million, which included the construction, escalation, demolition, redesign. Um, so essentially only 82.2% of the property was insured. So that's that instance, you know, the reconstruct bill came in at 22.5 and they only got paid out 18.5 million and the owners had to raise an extra $4 million to return that property to its former glory. Uh, it's a pretty scary scenario, but I, I guess it just reiterates the fact that it's really important to get this un exercise underdone, undertaken regularly and, and independently um, by a suit suitably qualified professional. I just wanted to quickly um, touch on this because it's, it, it's coming up more and more where strata companies are having difficulties um, gaining coverage. Um, and, I, and, you know, most of the time that's due to a high claims history, which also most of the time is due to water ingress. Um, so this is, is an option and, you know, we offer this service in Southeast Queensland and there's many, or, many other companies that offer this around the country is doing a roof inspection. We do it by um, our CASA licensed drone operator um, and reviewed by building inspectors to say, hey, here's the issues. Um, here's a repair schedule of the works that you need to get done. This then gets sent to the insurer. And we've had a lot of success with, um, you know, strata properties unable to obtain insurance, go through this exercise, get it inspected, get it repaired, and you'll get insurance. So I just wanted to make sure that people are aware of that option. If you're getting denied coverage, yes, look around at other insurers, but maybe it, it may be time to go through this exercise. Um, get your wet areas inspected for any flexi hoses that might be an issue in your, in your property, um, your waterproofing membranes, that type of thing. Um, so that's coming up more and more. Obviously insurers have had a um, tough, period, they're becoming smarter, more risk adverse. This might be a scenario that suits your strata company to make sure that you're covered into the future. That's about my half an hour up, Nikki. I'd uh, just like to thank everyone for listening in and looking forward to some questions that will hopefully um, answer a lot of questions for a lot of people around the country. Excellent. Thanks so much. So, yeah, it was it was very interesting to go through all of those points. It's very complicated, of course, and there are lots of questions that have come in in regards to building some insured. Um, so we might just cover some of them now. Probably uh, the first one is, um, can the committee be held accountable for providing an untrue report for insurance renewal? And what can owners do to prevent this from happening? Yeah, I guess the most important thing there is to make sure that the committee is not coming up with that figure themselves. So, you know, if they've come up with that figure themselves, yeah, 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 potentially they could be liable for that. But it's important to engage an independent professional to come up with that figure. And also, as I, as I mentioned, important to make sure that they've got professional, suitable professional indemnity insurance in place. So even if their assessment 
comes up and, and you are underinsured, at least you're covered um, by that professional indemnity insurance in, in, in the worst case scenario. And just a question, you spoke about the inflation that we're seeing and showed the graph on the inflated prices and how that's starting to level off, thank goodness, now. Uh, do you feel that um, over the next few years, rather than waiting for the, the usual five years to get a, to get a uh, reinsurance valuation done, is it going to happen more frequently because the, the fluctuation in the market changed things over this period of time? Yeah, it should be. Um, we're, we're definitely recommending annual updates at the moment. And, and even if, you know, we've been to the site before, we can do a desktop update. But it's, yeah, really important to do that more regularly. That five years is way too long at the moment. And, and I know that's um, legislation driven. I know it's an added expense, but it's better than being underinsured by a significant percentage. Um, so we can bring that back in line with what's actually happening in the market and not just being based on an automatic indexation applied by the insurer. Absolutely. Okay. Or potential to be overinsured? Yeah, potential. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, that that's, um, and we're still finding that as well, you know, because of the media hype, um, even though the 20% annual increases have been relevant in some areas of the country, it's not applicable to all. Um, so some people have been over conservative during this period as well and gone over the top. Um, so again, it, important to get that independent valuation done to drag that back to what it should be rather than being based on, I guess, a gut feel or what you've read in the media. Okay, New South Wales question. Uh, we obtained valuation from a qualified quantity surveyor and they did a drive-by valuation. Should the valuation include an, any owner's improvements or fixtures? If not, will this result in an underinsurance of building? And we do hear this a lot from, from uh, quantity surveyors. They might be in a different state and they get a real estate agent or someone to do a drive-by. Do you hear about that, um, Zach? And um, and how, how does that affect the valuation and what do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. I, I've, I've never understood drive-by valuation. Um, as I mentioned in my presentation, one of the most important things we do outside of the actual value is building up that description for the insurer to enable them to, to assess the risk confidently. Um, so if you're doing a drive-by valuation, there's no way you can pick up whether there's a lift at play a swimming pool, you know, is there fire sprinklers in the basement? Um, you know, is there a CCTV system or is it um, access controlled? You know, all these things can can help, um, you know, you decrease, you know, your, your, your premium. So if those things are being missed, it, it is a real risk of, of underinsurance or paying excessive premiums because the insurer hasn't got enough information to confidently um, um, do their risk assessment. Um, the other point in that question was lot owner fixtures. Um, really common question. I tried to briefly cover off that, on that. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of different things at play there. Um, try and use that analogy of turning the building upside down and shaking it. Um, anything loose or that falls is the lot owner. Um, that needs to be covered by the lot owner and has nothing to do with the, with the strata. Um, but yeah, things like it, you know, air conditioning, if it's only servicing your lot, that's your responsibility. Carpets or easily, easily removable floor finishes, that's your responsibility. So important to understand that and discuss that with, uh, with your strata manager and your broker and your QS um, to make sure adequate coverage. Okay, and we did have a question that came into the site. It was about a lot uh, who had done renovations on the unit and probably done over the top renovations and spent quite a bit of money on it compared to the the actual valuation of the property itself and there was a question on how that would um, affect the value of the building and whether that's taken into account as well yeah so it definitely should be taken into consideration um, and that's probably that scenario where we need to go a step further and look at individual lot valuations um, it's it's an extra expense, I guess, for, for the strata company, but does help ensure um, that everyone's adequate, adequately insured. Um, and there's no way of knowing, unless you go into, into every single lot, um, the differences between each, especially if it's a 30, 40 year old, old complex and renovations have definitely occurred. We need to pick up on that, hey, everything does get replaced old for new but anything over the top of a, of a level of finish that we're allowing for 
um, needs to be accounted for on a per lot basis, so should be considered. Uh, this one's from Queensland and it's saying, uh, I'm a treasurer of a 51 unit complex in Queensland. Given the current period of higher inflation and the fact that most valuations are only completed every five years, when trying to arrive at an insurance value between valuations, are we reasonably safe to increase the last completed valuation by the relevant annual inflation rate? And obviously we could bring the valuation forward from five to three or four years, but we really don't want the extra expense due to cost pressures on our insurance premiums. However, at the same time, we also don't want to be underinsured. So I guess we've discussed that to some degree, but is there a different uh, situation in far north Queensland with what's happening with insurance up in that, area, that state or that area? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, you know, I guess a lot of property, and we work on a lot of those properties, they're, they're under a lot of stress, I guess, financially, their premiums are through the roof. Um, and it is a good question. I guess the risk is you can't just use a CPI percentage or an inflation, inflation percentage. The closest you're going to get is tracking the ABS construction construction statistics for your area, but still there is a slight risk. That, that's the closest you're going to get, but there still is a slight risk because there's those escalation periods, differences in professional fees and whether they're increasing or decreasing um, differences in demolition costs. So yeah, I, I, I would advise people to uh, research or track that ABS construction inflation statistic and maybe chuck on a, a bit extra as well to cover yourself in between that period. If you don't want to talk to a QS or have, or have them involved at that extra expense, that would be my recommendation if I owned a, if I owned a lot in that region and, and looking to head down that avenue. Okay. And we've just been asked a question in chat and, then, uh, and a Victorian question. I've only just been made aware of the requirement to have a valuation every five years. I was going to find a certified valuer. Are you saying I should use a building professional instead? Yeah, so quantity surveyors are best placed. Um, and, and a lot of, uh, you know, that's drawn into legislation now around the country sort of recommend, recommending that. Um, yeah, so property values can property values can assist to a certain level if they're comfortable too and have adequate insurance. Um, but yeah, just obviously recognizing they're experts in market value, but we're looking at construction um, reinstatement value here. So best to appoint a quantity surveyor. They're most likely able to assist you. And we've also been asked in chat this morning: can building insurance of the OC cover private property? Um, and how about solar panels on individual lots? Um, yeah, so solar panels on individual lots is contents for the for the lot owner, not the strata company. Private property depend, there's lots of different instances here as to how the plan's drawn. And whether this, you know, and, and even bylaws come into play as to who's responsible for what, um, especially if it's in an exclusive use area of common property. So really important to ask that question of probably your strata manager first as to who's actually responsible for, for that property to ensure it, maintain it, um, replace it. Um, so I would go down that avenue first because um, it depends on your bylaws and also how the plan was originally drawn. Okay, thank you. And we've been asked what's the average cost of getting a quantity uh, surveyor's valuation report? And I guess that's a bit hard for you to respond to, Zach, depending on the property itself. Yeah, so it's, it's um, I guess, us and the market, um, pricing is driven by the number of lots in the complex. Um, so to give you an idea, it ranges from $280 to $2,000 to, to get a valuation done, uh, depending on the size of the complex. Um, so obviously, you know, the duplex is sort of probably that sub $300 mark at the moment and ranging up to, you know, three to 400 lot properties are up towards that two, 2000 or more mark. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And you just mentioned quickly um, in one of the other answers about a desktop valuation. Could you give us an idea of what that is? Yeah, I guess being used more and more because um, it's so important to be on top of it at the moment in the current market. Um, so desktop valuations can, uh, you know, it cuts out that inspection process. So it can save you on professional fees. Um, but it's just really important if you're engaging a professional for the first time, and they're offering, offering you a desktop valuation, it's like doing a drive-by. Um, there's obvious risks at play there. Do they know what they're looking at? Do they know what's included? Can they do that risk assessment for the insurer? Um, so definitely encourage it um, as a, as a stopgap between that sort of legislative-driven three to five-year review period 
um, to keep on top of it, but make sure that that company has done it before so they know what they're looking at. And they should also check with you whether there's been any improvements to the property since the last valuation, because there could be something at play there that needs to be included on top of what they already know is there. Okay, thank you. We've been asked as well about GST and whether GST is included in the building sum insured. It is, yeah. Yeah, so, so all, um, all policies include GST for the building sum insured. Okay, that I'm aware of, yeah. Can you please discuss cladding and potential refusal to quote on coverage? Yep, yep, very topical um, at the moment. So again, um, really important that inspection phase. So um, if we are noting any type of cladding, we're not fire engineers, but at least that allows the insurer to look from a risk point of view and say, hey, the QS has notified some cladding at play here. Do you have a previous um, you know, preliminary cladding inspection report? So we know that none of this cladding is combustible. Um, so yeah, there, there's, there will be companies that refuse coverage. There's been obviously um, legislative requirements in some states to get those inspections done. Um, but if you refuse it, if you're being refused coverage, first step would be to get a combustible cladding inspection report done. Um, and our report may also, you know, raise some red flags as to whether that may be a possibility as well. So first step should be to engage a, um, if, if it's been picked up by the insurer, is to engage a fire engineer or a suitably qualified professional to do a, um, a combustible cladding report. Okay, thanks very much, Zach. And then we've been asked an interesting question uh, and more to do with uh, with New South Wales. Will policies now be adding extra costs to cover engineers and DBPA requirements? Uh, yeah, so that, that'll be picked up in that professional that professional costs um, line item in the building sum insured. Um, and again, I, I guess there's there's been different legislation at, at play in all different states that could increase or decrease that professional fees some. Um, so yeah, I guess a, another reason why this this process needs to be gone through and and why it can change significantly over time. Um, so yeah, that will form part of that professional fees allowance within your building sum insured. Okay, and we had a question, a very topical as well at the moment, about electric vehicles stored and charged on strata properties affecting insurance premiums. So are you doing much work in that space at all, Zach, or how does that affect uh, the building sum insured? Yeah, so we will note it. Um, we will note any EV charges, um, you know, car stacker systems, those sort of things. And then it's up, up to the insurer as to how that risk affects your policy. Um, so if we're noting EV charging stations, um, might be a question for your broker as to the effect that has on your policy. They might be increasing your premium due to the added risk. Yeah. Please discuss the position where a lot, a lot holder develops their townhouse lot in a way that moves common property walls outwards and increases the footprint of the building structure within the lot's backyard on title. Will the increase in valuation and insurance premium be borne by other or all lot owners? Yeah, it's probably a case that I'd recommend an individual lot valuation so that that can be um, that cost can be shared appropriately. Obviously, we're assuming that you know the plan of subdivision or the, the strata plan has been redrawn to allow for that extension. Um, but because that forms part of the structure, and, and you know we're, we're assuming you know that the body corporate is responsible for the structure. It's not say in Queensland a standard format plan. Um, or in WA, a strata survey plan where, um, you know, there's differences in who's responsible for what, depending on how the plan's drawn. But assuming that that plan's been redrawn to include that extension, that structure's responsibility is borne by the strata company, the fairest way that I would recommend is to do an individual lot valuation for each lot, which will pick up that extension, which is covered under the strata policy. Okay, thank you. Uh, and if a total destruction of 15 units occurs, what percentage of the building's cover is paid out to single storey units and double storey duplex units? That's an interesting one. Um, again, I, I guess it's gonna be treated on a whole to, to reconstruct that development typically, unless you've had individual lot valuations at play, or I guess historically as well, it could be say, here's your total sum, um, and we've got uh, an entitlement in your lot entitlement schedule, your contribution entitlements, 
and it might be placed on that figure. So um, important to, to know how that is divvied up, but it, it will be based on a total. What the strata is responsible for um, to ensure replacing like for like, if you've got adequate coverage in play, everyone's going to get replacement like for like. And we had a comment come in, an increase in $1 million in the valuation of a building has minimal effect on the premium paid. Um, yeah, so it, I guess it depends on, on how that insurer sees the risk in that property. Um, so, you know, a million dollar increase, depending on the, the size of the property is not uncommon. And maybe they don't see that jump as, as much of a risk. That's just what's happening in the market. And they've, they've tacked on an increase to the premium as such. But, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different things um, at play from the insurer's or underwriter's perspective as to how they see that risk, what money they've got in the kitty and where those premiums come from. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'd, I, again, I'd recommend probably discussing that with your broker. Um, if there's if there's a concern there. And we also had another statement that came in. I just can't see how much a 20-year-old building would be that different to another 20-year-old building to be able to do a desktop valuation so as to keep the costs down. It isn't going to be necessary to do a site inspection if you have all this experience. It should be able to be done. So would you like to comment on that, Zach? Yeah, yeah. Well, I get, yeah, you know, the buildings next door to each other can be different. Um, we don't know what under the roof, what's inside, what's underneath in the basement. Um, you know, inside you, you're missing out on, on what fire equipment's installed, um, you know, whether they're up to current codes, um, what security systems are at play, what materials are being used, is there a risk of asbestos or combustible cladding? So you, you just can't pick that up from a desktop valuation. So I'd, I'd highly recommend an inspection um, in any case. Um, otherwise, the insurer, as they should, is going to allow for the worst case scenario and your premiums will rise. Mm, okay, thank you. And we had a question from Canberra saying insurance um, complexities where an apartment building shares a basement with a commercial building next door and how you would handle that from an insurance valuation point of view. Yeah, so again, we're, we're looking at how the plan's drawn there. Um, there could be two different body corporate or strata companies um, at play there as well. So um, as per the plan and our inspection, we're splitting evaluation between the responsibilities of that basement and who owns what, what areas, who's responsible for what. Um, so yeah, we will split that valuation to, to push that building sum insured onto the relevant um, body corporate or strata company. Um, and, and that's the way to look at that scenario. Not uncommon, there's a lot of mixed use developments you know, they might have a principal body corporate or owner's corporate play with different subsidiaries where the apartments are, are responsible for different areas and the commercial lots out the front on the ground floor are responsible for different areas. Um, so they can be separate, some insured at play for the one property, depending on how that's been drawn and structured. Well, that's wonderful. Thanks, Zach. I think we've covered just about all of the, the questions that, um, that are applicable. If we didn't get a chance to cover your question, please jump into uh, the Lookup Strata site and you can submit that question on the Ask a Strata question page. And Zach, hopefully we can send that through to you and you might be able to provide a response. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Do you have anything else that you'd like to leave us with finally, just before we end the session? Any final thoughts? Oh, I don't think so, Nikki. I, I just hope that, um, yeah, questions were answered. Um, it was um, insightful to some. Um, yeah, any questions, reach out to, to Nikki or myself, um, either team, and, and we will assist. Um, and thanks for logging in and thanks for your time. If you gained value from this video, please hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're looking for information about parking, strata insurance, defects and more, head over to lookupstrata.com.au or sign up to our free weekly newsletter via the link in the description box below.